QuickBooks Online 2022 Deposits, Owner Investment, and Loan. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file we set up with a free 30-day trial. Holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. In the business view, as opposed to the accounting view, if you wanted to change to the accounting view, it is something that you can do by going to the cog up top and then going down to the accounting view on down below. We will be going back and forth from the accounting view here or by jumping on over to the sample file just to see where the navigation differences will be. Let's open a few tabs up top by going to the tab up top and right clicking on it and duplicating that tab. I'm going to go back to the tab to the right, duplicate it again by right clicking on it and duplicating it again. If I was to find the reports in the accounting view, just to, as that is thinking, jump on over here, it's into the reports area. If we go back on over to the business view, the reports are located in the business overview, which we're in the second tab now. I'm going to go to the reports. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet report. So open up the good old balance sheet. One of our faves. One of our faves. Hold. I'm going to close up the hamburger. And scroll up top and change the range from 010122 to 123122 and run it in the report to the right. Let's go to the tab to the right. I'm going to open up another report. This time it's going to be the trial balance. I'm not opening up the income statement because we will not have an impact on the profit and loss or income statement here. I'm going to type in instead trial balance to open it up. I'd like to get used to using the trial balance because it's a great report to uh, check when you're entering data into the system it in essence being a balance sheet on top of the income statement but without the subtotals even if you're not familiar or uh, too familiar with the debits and credits it's still a great report just to see those accounts and see what the activity is and you can drill down on them going to go back up top and change the range again from 010122 to 123122 and run that report So there we have it. Going to go back then to the balance sheet at this point. Hold control down, scroll up just a bit. Now we're imagining we're starting up a business. This is a, the startup process. The first thing that typically many businesses will need is some form of capital. They're going to need money in order to invest. So we got to generate some money that we can then invest in and then hopefully use those investments in order to generate revenue. So how do we get the money at first? Later on, we hope most of the money is going to be coming from customers. At the beginning, for the initial investment, it might be coming from the owner. So we're going to first take a look at an investment from the owner putting money into the business, which if it was a sole proprietorship would be just like the owner taking money from their personal account, putting it into the business account. If it was a corporation, then it would be like the issuance of stock, the issuance of the stock in essence being the owner investing money into uh, the business. And we'll also take a look at a loan, which would be the other primary way to finance the operations of the business and get that capital or cash that is first needed. Then when you're first starting the business, depending on how capital intensive it is, how much money you need for the startup, you will typically be buying inventory or fixed assets, property, plant, and equipment, long-term assets that you're going to use to then generate money in the future, either through selling the inventory or through the use of the machinery, trucks, equipment, so on, in order to generate revenue. So that means that this deposit will be hopefully a little bit different than the normal kind of deposits that we expect to have throughout the business, which will be from us generating revenue from customers. And we wanna make sure that we make that distinct in basically our accounting system. To like look at it a little bit closer, let's take a look at our float chart here. And this is basically the revenue cycle. Now, this is on this is a flow chart from the uh, desktop version, but I'm just looking at the normal flow of any accounting system. And we happen to have nice forms here, which tie into the forms names in general that we're going to be using in the online version. So note that if you're in a system, the three kinds of a systems that you can have with the with the revenue cycle, I would say, is one in which you're on a cash basis, but even a step further, you are dependent on the bank 
meaning you're constructing your entire books from the bank. So that's even a step further in simplification from a cash basis. And then two, you're on a cash basis, but you're using what QuickBooks wants you to use on a cash basis, which means you're at a cash register, for example, you're collecting cash and you're creating sales receipts, doing the work at the same point in time as you get paid. And, and then three, you're on an accrual basis because you're, you're in an industry such as bookkeeping or accounting or the legal industry or something like that where you do the work first and you invoice the client and therefore have to have an accrual component of accounts receivable on the revenue cycle. So if you, t if you consider those three methods, this first method is one in which the one where you're basically just getting money and you're, you're going to say that possibly from gig work or something like that and you're just recording every deposit then when it comes through and possibly with the use of bank feeds as revenue at the point in time you have an increase to the checking account. In that event, you can use that method depending on the industry that you're in, but you have to be careful when you're using that method if you have deposits that are not from customers so that you do not accidentally record them as a deposit uh, from a customer. You wanna be able to differentiate that and report the deposit correctly Otherwise, you'll report it as income, and for taxes, you're reporting uh, income on it. You'll end up reporting basically income on it. So from a, from a cash basis, and especially one where you're basically reliant on the bank, you want to make sure that you're able to dif differentiate those deposits from the customers, which hopefully will be most of them, and those deposits that might not be, which will be more rare, such as those from the owner or from a loan. So the, the next thing we want to note is that you could enter the deposits then with the use of the deposit form. And if you were doing the normal kind of accounting process, either creating an invoice, receiving a payment that you put into undeposited funds or created a sales receipt that you put in undeposited funds, that's when I would use the deposit form because the deposit form will then help you to take the money out of the undeposited funds, group them in the proper fashion so that you can have them grouped in our accounting system in the same way as they are grouped on the bank statement, allowing us to do a bank reconciliation much more easily. So that's why this actual form is really good. However, if you're doing a deposit that doesn't, isn't connected to undeposited funds, it's not connected to a receive payment or create sales receipt, then you, I would just use the register. And that's what I'll basically do here. So let's go back on over. I'm going to then I'm going to go back to the first tab. Imagine we the owner are putting money into the company. The process when you enter a transaction will generally be I'll hit the drop down and say, well, first off, is there going to be some kind of form designed specifically for this task? And usually I will use that form. Now, there's no there's no specific form like an invoice because it's not coming from a customer. Sales receipt doesn't work because it's not coming from a customer. We could use the deposit form and that's basically what we will use. But I don't really need to go to the deposit form here in this case because it would be easier oftentimes for me to enter it directly into the register. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to I'm going to enter it into the register and I'll do that by going to the bookkeeping down below. If you were in the accounting view, it would be in accounting down below. I'm going to then go to the chart of accounts, which is usually the default here, chart of accounts. I'm going to close up the hamburger and then I'm going to go into the cash here. I'm going to go to the view register. Note that the view register here is on all of the balance sheet accounts in essence, possibly not the retained earning ones, but all of the balance sheet accounts. So the register, you usually think about it as a cash thing but there is a register that you can do this kind of transaction for all of them. Also note that you have a difference here than the desktop version where you can identify the type of transaction you are entering. So if you hit this drop down or rise up in this case, it'll have all the types of uh, transactions that you can put into the system. So even though I'm putting it into the register, I can clearly designate that I want it to be entered with an, a deposit form. So this will give me the minimum data or detail I will need to enter in essence a deposit here. So I'm gonna say, all right, this is gonna be as of 0101, let's say, let's say 22, beginning of the current period. And it's gonna be from the owner, I'll just add owner here, owner tab. And the owner, notice I don't really have, it's not a customer or a vendor, but between the two, I'll say customer and we'll say owner. 
memo let in for the memo we could say owner investment and then it's going to be a deposit we're going to say it was for sixty-five thousand. and now the other side this is where you want to be careful that it doesn't go to income you're not it's not income because we the owner put the money in here other deposits we would hope would be income we want to put it into some equity type of account and you'll recall that they gave us like a hundred equity type of accounts which is quite kind of weird honestly and they're kind of out of order here as well because they put the expenses up top but you get down here to the equity accounts and you might put it into basically the the retained earnings sometimes it'll just be in the retained earnings or you might break it out as its own basically owner investment account in other words the you, you could have you could you know generally have one account for as your owner investment account or you might break out basically the owner investment into its own account that you should roll into the like equity account or retained earnings periodically so that's kind of a a judgment call but they gave us the owner investment account and i and i like that we're going to put it into the owner investment account remember if it was a corporation it would be like the issuance of stock would be a similar kind of uh, transaction here so let's go ahead and save it and there we have it let's go to our balance sheet and freshen up the report run going up top and running it so we got something fresh something fresh to work with go into the uh, 90,000 there is our deposit now if I drill back down on it it'll take us to the actual deposit form not to the check register so we go into the deposit form and there is the actual deposit form and notice on on the deposit form uh, we, we got just the, the checking account up top and then the funds received the account basically down below on it so I'm going to close that back out and then go back up top back to our summary and then the other side went into the equity side of things down here went into the to the owner's investments 65,000 increase in the equity so assets went up equity went up but net income did not go up because it's not a performance item it's just the owner putting money from their personal account into the business account we didn't actually generate any revenue so there's the 65,000 scrolling back up let's go back to the balance sheet so now we've got some cash we've got some capital that we can invest in some uh machinery and inventory but it's not enough we need more we need more capital so let's take out a loan that's a good idea let's go to the first tab over here we're going to do the same kind of thing i could i could go to the to the hamburger up top and we could use the deposit form again but we're going to say that with this month, we're going to do the same thing, enter it into the register, which is in essence the fastest way generally to enter a deposit that's not connected to a sales receipt or a receipt payment type of form. In other words, it's not coming out of undeposited funds, which has that specific need of grouping the deposits in the way you want them grouped. So I'm going to go back in here and let's say this one happens as of the second. And we're going to take out a loan and we're going to imagine this comes from Chase, which is a bank chase tab we're going to set them up we'll set them up as a customer again it's kind of like other they're not really like a customer but we'll keep it at that and then we're going to say this is a loan that we're getting we're getting a deposit of this time let's say fifty thousand loan and the other side once again not income it's not income <laughs> right it is this side's going to go to a loan payable and i think they gave us a loan payable as well note that the loans payable can be tricky too because you might have a short term and a long term portion in other words this loan might be due back in like five years but you might be paying monthly installments on it or something like that that means there's a short term and a long term portion to it so typically i will break put the the loan payments uh in loan payable in a current liability type of account and i would like to have the entire loan generally in one account so that when I record the information in accordance with the amortization table with the payments, I can tie it out to that one account. And then if I need to break it out to a short term and long term portion, I'm going to do that periodically at the end of the month or year as is needed for financial reporting purposes and then reverse it back to one account so that I can use it for internal use. That's that would be my preferred method. I would also have a different loan account for each loan that you have, possibly sub accounts to a master or a parent loan account and uh, that way you can you can track each of your individual loans in the system and tie it out to the amortization table and when you work with your accountant that wants to tie out the short-term and long-term version that's fine 
we just want to break it out you know, for that time frame and then put it back into the system that works best for the bookkeeping. We'll talk more about those adjusting entries when we get to the adjusting entry depart area. But remember that uh, just keep in mind that when you're doing the data input, the, the goal is to make the data input as easy as possible and then make the adjustment process as easy as possible and, and have everything reported properly. So the goal of entering things easily and making them correctly reported at the end of the time frame can be two separate goals that you want to, that's why you have the adjusting process at the end of the period. And people that are focused on the adjusting process sometimes forget the, the first goal of, of the accounting department as easy as possible, as efficient as possible, and the accounting department often doesn't have, you know, fully appreciate the reporting needs at the end of the period. So we'll talk more about that in the adjusting area. But anyways, let's go back to the balance sheet, sidetrack, sidetrack let's run this one again freshen it up and then now we've got more cash that's what i'm talking about we can then go into that let's drill down there's our deposit form there's the fifty thousand. using a deposit form if i go into it i see an actual deposit form not the check reg so let's close that back out scroll back up again the other side this time is going into a payable account also not on the income statement no impact on the income statement thus far we haven't earned any revenue or created any expenses thusly thus far so if i go into the accounts payable or the loan payable at this point we've got then the original amount was the 22 and now the 50 in the loan uh, payable scrolling back up back to the balance sheet we could see this in a nice quick view on the trial balance and look how nice and easy you can jump back and forth between those with like minimal scrolling everything fits on like one page without even i don't even need to scroll i've got it zoomed in 150 and i don't need to scroll well maybe a little bit but still like it was pretty minimal that's the beauty of the trial balance i could scroll down if i that wasn't at 150 i was over see at 150 i don't need to scroll pretty much at all in any case this is where we're standing at this point in time. We got the trustee trial balance. So if you're following along with the practice problem, I think this is the easiest one to check your numbers at. If your numbers tie out, great. If they don't tie out, then you might want to do a range change up top and see if it's a date issue that is the problem. And then uh, at the end of each section, we'll go over the transaction detail report. And that's another place that we can kind of drill down and figure out if there's any uh, problems at that point as well.